Space has always been fascinating for people while they watch the sky. Scientists and philosophers alike have pondered the deepest questions of life. What would it be like to go to distant galaxies? And more importantly, what kind of life could exist there? Space is just space. Its size is absurd. It would take years to reach our nearest neighboring star, even if we could travel at the limiting speed of the universe. At least we have science fiction like Star Trek to test the human imagination, even if we haven't yet found the answers to these problems. But today, thanks to NASA's warning system, the last limit could be within reach. Since nothing can move faster than the speed of light, this is the fastest it has ever been. Light can reach the moon from Earth in just over a second due to its speed of 300,000 kilometers per second. In less than the blink of an eye, light can travel from Los Angeles to New York. Proxima Centauri is the closest star to Earth, separated by 4.25 light years. The Parker Solar Probe, which is currently in orbit, is the fastest spacecraft, reaching a top speed of 450,000 meters per hour. At that speed, one could get from Los Angeles to New York City in just 20 seconds. But it would take the solar probe about 6,633 years to reach Earth's nearest neighboring solar system. Why can't we use conventional rockets? Conventional rockets are ineffective because they are too slow to travel between stars. The distances in space are enormous, and conventional rockets cannot reach speeds high enough for practical interstellar travel. Spacecraft, such as space shuttles and Voyager probes, are limited by their current speed, which is very slow compared to what it takes to reach other stars. Even the New Horizons probe, which traveled to Pluto, would take tens of thousands of years to reach the Alpha Centauri system if it were pointing in that direction. Faster than light travel, which would be necessary for convenient interstellar travel, is currently only possible in science fiction with concepts like wormholes and warp drive technology. The Star Trek writers ran into problems developing the series due to its space opera nature. They wanted to avoid making the series boring or conventional, so they needed to find a dramatic way to transport the characters across the universe while still maintaining some fidelity to the physics. The biggest challenge was the enormous distance between galaxies, which even at the speed of light would take hundreds or thousands of years to travel. The solution came with the introduction of warp speed, which allowed faster than light travel. To justify this, Newton's third law of motion was used, which states that there is an equal and opposite reaction to every action. This law made it possible to explain how a ship could move at such extreme speeds. When you accelerate in a car or fly in a plane, you experience Newton's third law of motion. You feel pressure on your seat as the vehicle moves and pushes you against the seat. This is similar to what happens on the Star Trek spaceship Enterprise. However, if the ship were traveling at close to light speed, the people on board would be crushed due to the difference in mass between them and the ship. To solve this problem, we turn to Einstein's theories of space and time, which allow us to overcome the limitations of the speed of light. According to Einstein, the speed of light is constant for all observers, and time is relative, meaning it slows down as you get closer to the speed of light. This has been shown by experiments with atomic clocks and fast rockets. For the crew of the Enterprise, time would pass more slowly, allowing them to travel cosmic distances in a reasonable amount of time. However, they still face the challenge of staying in sync with Federation time to manage an interplanetary civilization. The ship needs to travel faster than light to be efficient in space travel. According to Einstein's special theory of relativity, traveling faster than light is not possible. However, the general theory of relativity provides us with a different perspective. In this theory, space and time can be influenced by gravity and distorted. If we could control space-time and create a curvature, we could avoid the need to travel at the speed of light. The Enterprise in Star Trek uses a warp drive that generates a warp bubble around the ship. This allows the ship to move locally at modest speeds while warping space-time, 
maintaining synchronization between its starting point and destination. Although in our current reality we cannot warp space and time, in the fictional world of Star Trek, this technology is possible through the use of a compound called the lithium and a warp drive. The ship and its crew are protected by this warp bubble as they navigate through space. In 1994, the physicist Miguel Alcabayer proposed the idea of compressing space-time in front of a spacecraft and expanding it behind it, allowing travel at speeds faster than light without violating the rules of relativity. However, this theory has one major limitation. It requires negative energy or mass. Negative mass is hypothetical and has not been observed, so the only option would be negative energy. For a warp drive to work, a massive amount of negative energy would be needed. Alkibayer estimated that the mass of the entire observable universe would be required to create a 100-meter bubble using his warp drive. Subsequently, Scientist Chris Van Den Broek demonstrated in 1999 that it would be possible to reduce power requirements dramatically by increasing the volume inside the bubble, while maintaining a constant surface area. But it would still be much more than is feasible with our current technology. In recent research, methods have been proposed that could bring warp drives closer to reality in a futuristic setting. In addition, NASA engineer David Burns has developed a design for an engine that he claims could reach speeds of up to 99% the speed of light without using fuel. Burns uses a thought experiment with a box, a weight, and springs to demonstrate his idea. Although there are limitations due to the principle of conservation of momentum and special relativity, there is a possibility of achieving momentum using ions instead of a moving weight. These advances demonstrate the potential for human ingenuity to overcome seemingly insurmountable obstacles in the future. Burns's helical motor is an expanded spring-like design that accelerates ions in a loop to produce impulse. Although the idea is impressive, it presents significant practical challenges. The helical design would require a considerable size of 656 feet in length and 40 feet in diameter and a large amount of power would be required to achieve significant momentum. Although the process is inefficient, in a vacuum of space it could work if enough time and energy are available. Although not everyone shares Burns vision, there are plenty of people interested in traveling to other stars. Although reaching this goal can be difficult, ignoring all the options guarantees that it will be impossible. As the saying goes, 100% of shots not taken are missed. David Burns' helical motor is a major advance in space exploration. Although it is primarily theoretical and faces practical challenges, it could be crucial in unlocking the secrets of the universe and opening up new possibilities for exploration. Although we do not have detailed plans to build a working engine at present, the future remains bright. Creativity and perseverance will allow us to continue to push the limits of spaceflight and discover new frontiers.